Good afternoon everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this particularly interesting video where we have to find this area, area of a shaded region with regards to theta and I'll explain to you everything, the purpose momentarily. You have two equal circles that combine together and give this region of overlap and this right here, region of overlap is what we have to determine. If you were to extend from the centers of each of these equal circles that have equal radii, you're generating here a sector. If you were to blow it out, you're looking at something like this. And then you're looking from the other side, something which looks like that. These combine, they move inwards and they overlap. And you get this overlapping feature, which will look exactly like this. And that's the area we have to look at. And why is it with regards to theta? Because as the degree of overlap changes, increases or decreases, this variable theta will change. It'll either become larger or smaller with the amount of overlap, but the radius will always stay the same. Hence, it's area with regards to theta. Consider also this very important fact. If you have two circles of equal radii, equal proportions, they're just touching each other, but they're not overlapping. There's a certain distance between the two centers. This is your one radius, this is your other radius, and that distance here is equal to 2r. Now consider this scenario where they're touching each other, but they're touching each other such that the overlap is right here up to the centers. They've moved so close that the outer edge is touching the other circle center, likewise for both circles. Here now the distance is equal to just one radius dimension because the radius of both circles are overlapping each other, they're superimposed, so here the distance is equal to r the radius, a single radius. We're looking here at this area with regards to theta for those instances where this distance is always less than 2r but it's always greater than a single radius. And that's the situation we're looking at somewhere between here and somewhere between here. But not at either of these extremes but only in between. Because that gives us our reasonable amount of overlap for which then we can do this area determination. Any excess overlap and you have to do some other procedures and no overlap means you have no area to calculate. So we're looking at only this particular situation here of a reasonable amount of overlap. With this reasonable amount of overlap the angle will change as the degree of overlap changes. So how can you bring a sense into this problem? Think about everything like this with regards to a sector. When you're looking at this sector, a single representation here you can cut it off over here you have a triangle and you have a sector and you have only one of these half shaded regions if you look at the corresponding side and you do the same thing you have this other half shaded region when you combine both of these half shaded regions and they overlap you get this complete overlap and that's what we're looking at here the complete overlap if you can do the area of the sector and you can minus it from the area of this triangle, you'll get the area of a single shaded region, which is this right here. If you take the single shaded region and you multiply it by 2, you'll get the area of the two shaded regions combining to give you the complete overlap. And that's how you're going to tackle this problem. Find the area of the sector, which is easy. The area of the triangle is a little difficult and you do the difference of the two, you get the area of a single shaded region, you multiply by two because these combine together and you get the complete overlap. And that's the scheme we will use over here. Remember again, everything is here with regards to this constraint, which will represent a reasonable amount of overlap of the two circles having equal dimensions. We know the area of the sector is always equal to r squared theta over two, so that part is done. Now we have to find the area of the triangle, the triangle area. And how will you go about doing that? Well, bring out one of these representations. It looks something like this. You have a radius here, radius here, you have an angle here. Rotate this triangle only and cut it across. You have a certain base, you have a certain height, you have a certain angle here which you've split into theta over two and then theta over two on this side. You have a right triangle and you have a height. This has now become b over 2, this has become b over 2, and that's your height. All you have to do is find the dimensions of the base and the height, and you know the formula for triangle areas half, base, and height. That's all there is to it. How can you find the dimension of the base? It's not hard. Consider this triangle right over here. With regards to that triangle, you have sine of its angle, theta over 2 is equal to the opposite, which is b over 2 over the hypotenuse, which is r in all instances, the radius. b over 2r is equal to sine theta over 2, and then base is equal to 2r sine theta over 2. And that gives you the dimension of your base, 2r 
sine theta over 2. Remember, we started with half base, but now we've gotten the complete base. So we've got b is equal to 2r sine theta over 2. Now we have to find the height dimension. Consider the cosine theta over 2. Cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to adjacent, which is your height, over r h is equal to r cosine theta over 2. And we now know h is equal to r cosine theta over 2. The area of the triangle is equal to half times base, which is 2r sine theta over 2 times your height, which is r cosine theta over 2. Combine all of it, you get 2r squared over 2, you have sine theta over 2, and then you have cosine theta over 2. This simplifies to just r squared sine theta over 2, and then cosine theta over 2. Think about this trigonometric identity sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta and I'm looking at something which looks like that except that's sine 2 theta over 2 and you'll have this over 2 and you'll have sine theta cosine theta this format is available over here so you can bring this right in place of that and you'll see what will happen when we do that when we do all of that this is what will happen we'll have r square we'll have a sine 2 theta over 2 but in all instances the theta over here is theta over 2 and this is exactly what you end up with you end up with r square over 2 sine 2 times theta over 2 these twos cancel out and you end up with r square over 2 sine theta and this represents now the area of your triangle which is equal to r square over 2 sine theta we've gotten this area of the sector we've gotten the area of the triangle now we have to find their difference to determine the area of the shaded region. The area of the shaded region is equal to the area of the sector, which is r squared theta over 2 minus area of the triangle, which is r squared over 2 sine theta. You can isolate r squared over 2. r squared over 2 and you have theta minus sine theta. This represents the area of the shaded region. But we know the area of the overlap, as I showed you, is equal to two of these area of the shaded regions, because two of these combine to give you the complete overlap. So you just do 2 times that r square over 2 times theta minus sine theta and that will give you the area of the overlap. These will cancel out. The area of the overlap is equal to r square times theta minus sine theta and this right here will be your answer for the area of the overlap for a reasonable amount of overlap where the distance is less than 2r twice the radius but it is larger than a single radius, so you have a reasonable amount of overlap. And that right there is all that I wanted to present to you in this video as to how you can go about determining this. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.